I've never felt so conflicted about a game. On one hand, Deathloop is full of underutilized mechanics, half-baked systems, and a world that seems deep when it really isn't. It's a game that reached for the stars, but only managed to get a little ways off the ground in the process. However, despite all that, Deathloop may just be the groundwork for what could potentially be the greatest gaming genre of all time. And no one's talking about it. I can't I remember! I don't know if you just give me a second! Oh, they're not even trying! <laughs> oh! I adore Arcane Studios, so much so that they're probably one of my favorite game studios in the world right now. Dishonored is one of my most beloved franchises of all time, and Prey would be my favorite game ever if Cyberpunk didn't exist. So you would think I would love Deathloop too, but that's just not the case. The game lacks the coherent narrative of its predecessors, its characters fall flat, and the genius level design and theory crafting I loved in Prey and Dishonored is muted here. Despite all that though, Deathloop's core idea, time, and its incorporation into the immersive sim genre is potentially one of the most exciting new genres I've seen in this industry in quite some time. For those that don't know, Deathloop takes place in a never-ending daily loop, where players must choose between four different locations to travel to over four different times of day, morning, noon, afternoon, and evening. The ultimate goal of the game is to terminate all of the so-called visionaries or leaders on the island in one day, and to accomplish this, you must learn all their routines in an attempt to figure out a way to vanquish all eight in one loop, thus breaking the cycle and uncovering the truth of this mysterious island. It's a much more complicated premise than most games, especially when you add on the implications of spending points to carry guns and power-ups between runs and all the side stories you can uncover along the way. But overall, it's actually an amazing layout for a game. The reason that is, is because time or more importantly, persistence, is one of the major elements of our real world that games have seldom tackled up to this point. When you play a game like Call of Duty, once the match is over, it's over. You might rank up or unlock a new gun, but the implications of that single round simply die off with the winds of time. When you play a game like Skyrim, killing all the inhabitants in a town doesn't result in an entirely new settlement popping up beside it a week later. But Deathloop is different. Or at least it tries to be. Because in Deathloop, your actions in the morning in one zone affect the situation of another come nighttime. For example, I might hack Rambling Frank's fireworks in Carl's Bay in the morning, one of the visionaries in the game named after myself, and this will result in Frank meeting his demise later in the evening when the fireworks malfunction and take him out. This allows us to eliminate him without even having to infiltrate his fortress in Fristrid Rock, thus giving us the time to corral the others. It's the same reason games like Outer Wilds are so amazing too, putting players on a timer where they must meticulously set everything up in order to perform the perfect run and solve the puzzle. In a lot of ways, it's a speedrunner's dream. But here's the problem. That example I just gave you is very specific, because it's part of a predetermined main narrative of the game. If you play Deathloop, you inevitably will have to do the same exact thing I just described above. You'll have to prevent a fire at Otto's workshop on Up Dam in the morning, and you'll then have to infiltrate Frank's base to figure out how to hack his fireworks. And then in order to beat the game at the start of every single final loop run, you'll need to go to Carl's Bay and go to the exact same location where the fireworks always are, typing the exact same code over and over, and hack the fireworks with the same secret message again and again, until you finally beat the game. And you see, this is the problem with Deathloop. There's a lot to discover in the world, and there technically are many things you can do across each loop. But when it's all said and done, there's only one path, one right way to beat this game. So as a result, that extremely interesting time mechanic that the game is based on becomes less and less of a feature and more and more of a barrier as you play. Instead of giving players the satisfaction of figuring it out for themselves and crafting their own ending, Deathloop simply supplies players a screen with all the answers, where you are given specific tasks in order to figure out the next step of the puzzle, slowly leading you around the world with a carrot on a stick, forcing us to the perfect ending. Games like Outer Wilds handle this a bit better because they don't give the player any hints, instead just trusting us to figure it out all by ourselves. That way each discovery actually feels natural and deserved. 
But even Outer Wilds doesn't solve the core issue of adding a time mechanic to games. Because while Outer Wilds does have multiple ways to end the game, unlike Deathloop, it still has a true, final, and best ending. And in order to get that, just like in Deathloop, you must figure out exactly how the game wants you to play and in what order you have to do things exactly. For games whose basis is all about creativity and ingenuity and discovery, the actual process of beating them is anything but. Funnily enough though, Arcane Studios actually already solved this issue before, with potentially the most underrated piece of gaming content ever, the Mooncrash DLC to Prey their previous game before Deathloop. Mooncrash thrusts the player onto a deserted moon base full of Typhon aliens from the base game and a host of mysteries to solve. In a similar fashion to Deathloop and Outer Wilds, Mooncrash 2 is on a timer, where as you wait, the simulation you are running slowly corrupts and becomes harder to manage, until you get to the point where your death is assured. So in order to beat the game, you must get all five playable characters off the moon base before time runs out. But here's where the genius of Prey Mooncrash comes in. Instead of like in Deathloop and Outer Wilds, where there's a predetermined perfect way to beat the game that you must follow, Prey gives the player complete freedom. In order to get all five playable characters off the moon, you must use one of five different escape routes for each character. One escape route could be escaping with a space shuttle, and another could be accessing an emergency escape pod on another part of the moon. But each character in your arsenal doesn't have a predetermined escape route they have to take. Rather, it's up for you to decide which character will escape and in which way, in what order, and how you're going to do it. On top of this, unlike Deathloop and Outer Wilds as well, where the simulation is always the same, Moon Crash's world changes per run. You might load up at the start of a new simulation and discover that the power is actually out this time across the entire facility, meaning your perfect plan to get off the rock is now screwed, because you'll need to figure out how to get the power back on in order to get through the same doors you've always been going through. This slight change in the formula provides a much more enriching experience though, because it forces the player to actually think constantly as they are playing, keeping you on your toes the whole way through. In Deathloop and Outer Wilds, once I figured out what I had to do, it just came down to actually having the dexterity to pull it all off in one go. But Mooncrash actually respects its players enough to trust that they can figure it all out for themselves instead. For example, you may notice early on in a simulation run that a door that is usually unlocked is locked this time randomly. So when you escape with your first character and you're picking who to choose next on the second part of your run, you can choose the hacker and go to the door and unlock it. And then when you move on to your third character after escaping with the hacker, that same door will be unlocked and easy to get through now, even on a character that otherwise would have had no way to deal with it. It's another small but genius tweak to the formula that makes Mooncrash leagues above Deathloop and even Outer Wilds. It's because you have multiple characters to go through the loop instead of one that you can pull off crazy things like leaving a helpful item on the ground or in a cabinet in one room for another character to pick up later in their run. In Deathloop, the only time we see persistence like this is in predetermined instances, like hacking Frank's fireworks resulting in a change later. But you see, that's the antithesis of everything that this type of genre should be. It shouldn't be just about slowly uncovering secrets that already exist in the world, but also discovering your own and new genius ways to solve problems. That's what makes adding time to a game so special. It adds that complexity and extra layer of thought that is so provoking when we play games. And it's also exactly what makes games so special when compared to things like movies and television. In fact, another cardinal sin is that Deathloop loses the urgency of Mooncrash and Outer Wilds because of the timer never mattering. In each of the four times of day, you can spend as much time in that zone as you want, before moving on. But in Mooncrash, for instance, because the simulation is always getting harder, it forces us to think and act more quickly which yes, is stressful, but ultimately much more rewarding. It's another example where the developers of Deathloop didn't trust their players. They instead were afraid that they would give up on the game if it was too challenging and too hard at first. But sadly, challenge, hardship, 
and making a game that actually makes us think is what will make a game memorable for so much longer. I know almost no one played Moon Crash, but a lot of people played Deathloop and The Outer Wilds, and both have been lauded endlessly. Truly though, we are potentially on the verge of what could be one of the coolest and most innovative game genres in so, so long. Since the advent of the modern MMO, which has since crumbled under its immense success. I've always loved the immersive sim genre, but it's so clear to me now that games like Moon Crash, Deathloop, and The Outer Wilds are what the future of it should be. In our lives, time is more important than anything. Because even with all the money, fame, or happiness in the world, one thing we can never get back is our time. It's the fourth dimension in a world where we can only see three and in many ways the core and foundation of our very being. Yet games up to this point have neglected how important it is. And I get it, because Lord knows it must be hard to make a game where you must account for almost absolutely everything. For what a player can do early in a simulation or a day that will later drastically affect its outcome. However, this is why the immersive simulation genre is a perfect place for it to happen. Because immersive sims are all about well, the simulation, providing players with endless possibilities and allowing them to solve it for themselves, instead of the game giving them all the answers along the way. And the final extension of this dimension is that of time, which adds an unbelievable amount of complexity and intrigue to an already winning formula. Imagine games where actions aren't a static string of bits, zeros and ones, but rather a flow through time where items persist, actions provide real and measurable consequences, and our imaginations can run wild. Deathloop isn't a horrible game. In fact, in a lot of ways, I kind of liked it. The combat is super fluid and fast paced. There are similar powers I love from Dishonored like teleporting, and there are moments of greatness in decision making and from the narrative that shine. But while most people are focused on how the ending sucked because it was confusing, I'm focused on how the ending sucked because it was easy. A game with such an amazing premise of a Groundhog Day scenario of living the same day over and over, that had so much potential to spread its wings mechanically, instead became a Dishonored sequel with a less coherent story that required a lot of backtracking and repeating of steps. These games could be special though, and in many ways they're so close. But in order to reach their full potential, developers need to take off the seatbelts and safety harnesses. And by my estimation, Prey Moon Crash is the only game to accomplish this truly so far. Remember, games aren't a movie. I love a good story with interesting characters. Hell, that's why Cyberpunk is my favorite game ever. But what makes games special is how we interact with that story. Or in other words, the story that we tell ourselves. And the reason that time in games has me so excited is because time is a key part of any great journey that up to this point in the game's medium has always been missing. It's an element that no movie, TV show, or Netflix series could possibly capture, and one that could take games to the next level. However, it's also probably one of the hardest mechanics to implement properly in a game as we just discussed. I don't know who will finally make this game I'm dreaming of, or how they will do it in a way that doesn't scare every single player away with immense complexity, but I truly hope someone can pull it off. A game based on the fundamentals of the immersive simulation's systematic design, with a focus on persistence, problem solving, and most importantly, freedom. And as always, thanks for watching.